700 horsepower, direct injection, supercharged. There's these videos of you clicking gears on the street and yeah, yeah. pulling the front wheels off the ground. What's up guys? We're I'm good. here with Andrew. Yeah. Andrew, Morgan. We met like five minutes ago, but um, yeah, yeah. I've actually met you before. A quick history. That's me. You know, Andrew Buck owns Buckshot. Started yeah, Buckshot. Buckshot racing about yep. 20 years now. Yeah. Um, when I was going to Glamis, probably 2005 or so, uh, you were jumping the double still. The old, oh, yeah, yeah. the, the, the double, double yeah. behind Oldsmobile Hill was still there. jumping that thing and I remember seeing you in Brawley at the gas station and you had the car on the back. Oh cool. <laughs> and I just like said what's up to you. But anyways, um, you've always produced really big travel badass sand cars. And you know since I was younger, Buckshot, you know the X3, the X5, yeah, I think X5, the X5 was we first. We were the first ones to really put a V8 with dual shocks. And yep. I remember going to the sand show and people laughing at me, well you got a V8 and dual shocks. <laughs> uh, you're not going to be able to yeah. go anywhere. And, yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and it's just evolved from that to, yeah. to yeah. different, all the different models. We've got like five different models. Yep. And then now, uh, you know, a guy talked to me into building a Baja Bug, and I had to do something different. I can't just build a regular Baja Bug. Definitely. So. And that's that's what we're here to see today, you guys. I mean, we're in Andrew's shop, and there's a lot of there's big... X, X2R, that one's about 1,800 horsepower. There's a and lot of nice small car with pieces in there. 1,800 horsepower deal. It seems like that's the number everyone wants nowadays. So. Yeah, definitely. About 1500. Some older cars. That one's, that one's from 2005. We're just doing some updates on it. Yeah, see, that's kind of the car I remember. Yeah. I remember too when there, there was like a more of a pronounced shock tower in the front. Oh, yeah, that's probably the one I had with uh, when I was trying out the single shock. I mm -hmm. had a Fox single shock. I'd run one long shock that was an gotcha. internal bypass. Gotcha. And, uh, it worked good. It was just too hard to see. You know, and yeah. To get it to work right, I had to run the long shock. So, uh, so yeah, that's the old one that we've updated. Yep, they they yep. still keep going, they never die. So this thing, I saw this via, I follow you on Instagram, so I've seen like the build. Oh, okay. And then there's kind of these videos going around of you clicking gears on the street and yeah, yeah. pulling the front wheels off the ground. supercharged Camaro or some of the Cadillacs I think have this LT4. LT4, yep. Direct injection, supercharged, pretty much a stock motor. Yeah. Um, CBM did it with their computer and it's like I said about 700 horsepower on pump gas. With that's nothing, awesome. No mods. Yeah, that's it's like 650 foot pounds of torque at 2800 RPM. That's just crazy. And that's what I noticed like I looked under here and I was like dang that's the stock exhaust manifold. Right yep. there. Pretty much stock. And then like the heads, all the work and the stock. powertrain just looks factory. Yeah, so that's you know? why I came up with this box on the back. Some people maybe don't like the look of it. I don't know, but it's functional. This is actually the air box. Yeah. Because the throttle body is right here. So it goes straight into the air box. So okay. that gives it a big yeah, plenum, a big right plenum. There. So there's a lot of air for the for the supercharger to grab right away. For sure. And then it goes to a tube, and I move the air filter up under here just so it's not getting as much dirt and try and get it away from the heat. Yeah, there's your cone air filter yeah, with the yeah. outerwear. And then we got the oil cooler that uh, comes off of the stock, where the stock oil cooler just attaches to the pan. I, yeah, I just a... tapped into it and brought lines up and ran a remote oil cooler. Gotcha. And then we've got the uh, Albin's transaxle, which is about the the best you're going to get in an off-road transaxle. And that's a sequential situation too, sequential right? Sequential five-speed. Yes. Unfortunately, they're really expensive. <laughs> they're made in Australia. Well, you pay for what you uh, get with yeah, a lot of that stuff. Uh, definitely not the, uh, the old Volkswagen transmission. So whose idea was it to build the bug style platform? Well, I had a customer of mine from um, oh, years back, actually. He bought a car off me in, uh, God, it must have been 2005. Yeah. And then he uh, had that car forever, he sold that car and he bought a new car off me, the X6. And uh, he's had that for a couple, three, three seasons, four seasons, and then he asked about a bug. 
asked if I'd be willing to build one, so I said, sure. He said, no rush, just take your time, do what you think. Yeah. And uh, this is what it, what it came into. Um, unfortunately, he'd, uh, he'd been battling lung cancer, and he's since uh, passed away yeah. while I was building it. So this car is in memory of uh, Kevin, Kevin Jones, and um, it'll be used at uh, some events to show, and he's got a uh, foundation set up for awesome. uh, lung cancer and, and yeah. all charitable contributions. And we'll have more information on that later. Sure. You know, that kind of bummed me out that he wasn't uh, For sure. around to see it, the finished product. Couldn't see the fruition of it. every week. He was super excited about yeah. the cars. Yeah, really what, great guy. But what anyway. was the biggest hurdle with this thing? When you started with the platform and the chassis, and what was the build process? Did you start with a bug body and then kind of build it to that? Yeah, or? Well, I started with a bug body, but it's based kind of off of our bigger car. So the rear, yeah. if you took the rear clip, it's the exact same as our all our big cars. From, so we're from, talking from the front from the torsion of back, the arm. Yeah, yeah. Is, is pretty much the same back section. Okay. And same with the front. If you look at the front, it's slightly modified, but the, the, as far as all the geometry, the steering, the spindles, the hubs, the two-inch hollow spindle, yeah. you know, the big bypass shocks, it's all the same. It's on our you know, three hundred thousand dollar X two right there. So that's why there's the the brand, the marking right there. Yeah, the X two. Okay. Just, you know, it's based off of that chassis. And um, then I see some people. Sorry to interrupt you, but I see some people. So this is what I would call like an inline shock setup. Um, what's the benefit of running inline like that versus like, you know, a coilover and a bypass or vice versa? Well, it, mainly just packaging. Um, it's easier to get them to fit in there when they're in line than it is to make the A arm wider and fit them both in there. Yeah. And then we want to run the uh, bypass shock, you know, a lot longer stroke so For we sure. can get better uh, valving control out of, that. of the yeah. suspension, better valving. Mm -hmm. We can take advantage of the bypass tubes more when the sure. shock's longer, you're sure. running a longer stroke. The coilover is pretty much just to hold the car up. It's, it's yeah, they, really like a coil easy. carrier, yeah, essentially. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, so the idea was to make it wider too, because I've, I've got another Baja Bugs, and you know, you're right next to someone, you're banging your elbows. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> probably narrower than a UTV. Yeah, it's, it's so. even even when I've like been in Stefan's car, Stefan's got the blue, white, yeah, and silver blue, car. White, yeah. Uh, and that's a stock really tight because I did a lot of work on Stefan's body. car and you at the did. time I was yep. like, man, you can barely fit a shifter between Yeah, the it's seats, so. it's tighter than like a class one. So what I did on this car is I cut the body right down the center and I yep. added uh, 12 inches. That was going to be my next question because when you look at this thing, it has, it resembles a Beetle, you know, and it has the bug body, but there's a wideness to it. Yeah. That it doesn't look wrong. It no, just looks like it's that, that wider. Was the idea was to keep it still looking like a bug. Like yeah. I could have squared off this windshield, but I wanted the round look so it sure. looked like a bug. Yeah. I took uh, front fenders off of another hood and, and made them for the back so it had the curved fenders. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, I, I highly modified them, but I didn't. So this was off of a hood? Yeah, that or was. Or just a, the shape? Yeah, so what I did is basically took this piece, cut it off. Yeah. And then use that to start with to, to sure, make the rear fender. Sure. Just so I had that same kind of look. I didn't yeah, the language flat. is the same yeah, through the front and back. Flat fender. Um, and then the other thing we just added was the roof scoop to get more air into the. And that's coolings. a new addition, right? That's a new addition. Okay. I was only having problems like on the freeway doing about 70, 80. It would just, the temperature would keep creeping. I couldn't yeah. get the air into the radiator. So. Yeah. And that's just taking your airflow, natural aero, and then ducting that into, in exactly. front of the cooler. We have a big area back here that's kind of, you can't really see it because of the tinted windows, but, and then it puts it in front of the radiator, sure. which has got the uh, intercooler heat exchanger to cool the uh, intake air temperature yeah. for the engine as well yep. as the, uh, the radiator. Yeah, and so, then let's, let's just touch on the exterior a little more still. So, uh, coilover bypass, you're using Kings. King, um, King shots. That's a three inch in the back. Yeah, 3.0 front and rear. Um, on this one, we went with a 2.0 on the rear just to get it in there a little yeah. better. But I think on the next build, um, which we have a car outside that we're going to yeah. be starting on, we'll use a 2.5 on the back just because I think I can fit it in there, which is really tight right so there. So that, that renders my next question. So traditionally, you see a parallel shock setup, right? Yeah. So that's always kind of like when I saw a picture of this, I go, hmm, because this yeah, coilover right, is... Different angles. But, but it's like, for the packaging, right? Exactly. And okay. like we said, the coilover is just holding the car up. Yeah. I mean, it, this one does have valving in it to control it on the back because there's so much weight back yeah. there. But the main work is done by the bypass. And then we want the bypass to start at an angle and then increase to 90 degrees. We want it to get to 90. We for don't sure. want it to go past 90 because yep. then it'll get softer. So it yep. means it's going to get progressively stiffer. So that's why we put this here. If we would have moved it here, the shock would have been at the wrong angle at full bottom. Yeah. We would have been less than 90 and it would have gotten softer. At yeah, full so the bypass is exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, the bypass is where it needs to be. The front one is kind of 
you know, moved around to get it up in there and to get everything to fit with the body. Everything's sure. so tight. I had a special clock. Yeah, and to get it to get it to clear all the chassis in there. Yeah, it's it's really hard. I mean, I didn't want to cut <laughs> the body and make it not Definitely. look uh, take away from the look of it. So. Yeah, because you've retained this shape really well. You know, yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. has a really good vibe to it. The only thing I would change, I want to make the back cover a little more rounded, more like a... Yeah, because you have more angular here. Yeah, I think if we kind of flowed this back a little sure. more, almost make it look like the back lid of a freaking Volkswagen. Yeah, or even cool. kind of pick up on your lines on your scoop exactly. and, then, and then pull well, those I, lines into here. That's funny, because earlier today I had the scoop off and I set it on here to yeah. see how it would look, and yeah. it's almost exactly what I need. I bet. There. If I could take that and modify it a little bit, it'd be perfect. How many of your buggies are street legal? I see you driving some heinous stuff on the uh, street. Well, most of them are mine. You yeah. Know, I do it as special construction. Yeah. It's hard to build a car and sell it to a customer and say, here's a street legal car. Yeah. Um, in California. Other yeah. states, no problem. But yes, California, for sure. You know, it's sort of like you build a kit car. Can we go into like a little more detail about, like I always hear about getting special construction plates for California. Can you explain that process? Basically, it's like say you buy a kit car out of a magazine and you want to build a car yourself yeah. and register it for the street. California allows 500 a year. Gotcha. So you have to get a reservation number. You gotta get in early. Line for that. And then you gotta have it inspected and brakes and lights, all that safety stuff. And then- uh, But you don't have to have a VIN. No, they will sign you the VIN. Copy. But I, I think on the newer ones, you have to run the uh, smog legal engines. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't yeah. quote me on any of the legal. It's just, it's always things. one of those curiosities. Even I have to do yeah. that with a couple builds coming up and I hear about the special construction, yeah, right. you know, uh, offering and I know it's limited numbers and it's, I know. It's, it's, they make it so hard in California to yeah. register anything. Even yeah. If, you know, just to go register a regular toy is, is almost impossible. But the beauty of this too is that it's street legal. You this know, is, it's yeah, awesome. Still got the Volkswagen pan section in the center. With oh, the okay. Number. Yep. Now before we go into the inside, so this front clip, this whole front clip, the one piece, this is widened too, right? Oh, yeah. Down exactly. the middle. Yep. I took it and widened it right down the middle. So okay. normally when you buy this hood, I think CarTech has it. Yeah. It would be right here, and I just widened it too. Yep. Uh, and I really like the way it came out. I mean, yeah, you did well. I mean, there's, it doesn't look like there's something added in there. The only thing I would like maybe is to have maybe kind of a Volkswagen headlight in there, but even I can't, something it's so floppy out there. And, yeah, maybe something even round that represents a Volkswagen headlight that's got new yeah. tech, like like LED in there, like a Baja design or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, it's just it's just hard to fit it, and it gets heavy and starts to sure. embrace it. For sure. It just adds more to it. You know, With your thing. glass, did so? Did you have to have that piece made? Yeah. So what I did is I I shaped the body kind of off of one of my windshields I use in in uh, our X6. X6. Okay. So I think it starts out as a Lexus windshield, and, and then I, so you I trim took it. That, yeah, I took that to get the exact curve and shape. Yep. And then I made the, the inside frame so it would fit in there. And then I had my glass guy cut it. Is that Mike? North no, cut? Uh, Eddie Cotto. Okay. Cotto Auto Glass. Gotcha. He's about the only guy I know that can cut a curved windshield without breaking it. Yeah, I mean, it's a special thing. Guys can feel it, thing. but it usually takes them three or four windshields. It does. They don't want to do it anymore. It does, yeah. I mean, even I, I just did a windshield frame and I needed radius edges. And even like them getting it right, I cracked the first one. They had to do like three just to get the yeah. same cut right. So they cut it for me. Yeah. And then above all, Auto Glass, he uh, came and installed it for me. Gotcha. And he did an amazing job because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. And yeah. Uh, I wasn't even here when he put it in, and when I came back, I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, it looks job. like a production oh, unit, so you know, good. even the black trim on it. it yeah, just... and I didn't want to make too much of a curve on it to take away from the Volkswagen look, sure. but I think it was turned out just, just about right. Yeah. And then we have the uh, windshield wiper, electric windshield wiper, so you That's can just awesome. push a button, and you, know, you wouldn't think you need it in California, but when I drove it to work the other day, it was really foggy, and that, that sure came in handy. Yeah, there, and so. that's the thing with, you know, any kind of sealed cab off-road vehicle, they usually overlook that, and that's a huge yeah, yeah. part of packaging, is getting that wiper. Getting it to work know, right. Especially yeah, if it yeah. goes to Mexico or somewhere with yeah, Element. Yeah, yeah. Or even if you're in Glamis and it starts to rain. Yeah. I mean, what do you do with that? Yeah, exactly. I've, I've tried them a bunch of different ways before. I put them up here. You know, you see them on some kind of road sure, cars like sure. that. But at about 80 miles an hour, the windshield wiper flies behind you. Yeah. And you don't have to wiper anymore, so. What lights are you using? Those are Vision X. That's okay. their new modular light bar. Really bright, and it really projects out. I found a lot of problem with the LED light bars is they just flood the hood, and you can't see anything. You get a lot of glare. Yeah. But this one just, I mean, it's amazing how good it works. And these are the same units, yeah, just pairs the in the front. So what you can do with these is just attach them together. Uh -huh. And then I have them. They make specifically for me. Uh, 
a radius bar. Gotcha. So it matches all my roofs on my sure, cars. It's sure. the same, uh, it's pretty much the same radius. And it looks there. like there's a little like a LED attachment yeah, the, on uh, the side. That's the turn signal. Okay, cool. And yeah, that's, that's just a little modular unit that yeah, they have? Yeah, a little street bike one I stuck on there. Nice. A lot of times we hide them inside of our headlights on our other cars. Sure. I just stick it inside there. Sure. You don't even know it's there. Uh, wheel program, are those the OMFs? Yeah, OMF wheels, that's yeah. their three-piece uh, wheel. I have been seeing these things circulate around now. I mean, it seems like they're making a strong comeback yeah, with their they, they, wheel yeah, package. Yeah, it was just at their facility the other day, and uh, they got it going on. They do all their in-house powder coating, all their in-house machining. The only thing they don't make themselves is the hoop. Yeah, they the ring. Come as, they come in as blanks, and then they, make, they machine them out and make everything else. But yeah, I was really impressed with their operation. They've got every size, 15, 17s, go-karts. Yeah, uh, and they've spirits. been around for a long time. Yeah, I used to use them, God, I don't even want to say how many years ago, but back when I was racing quads, yeah, they, 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 they made a call for sure. Box for for sure, yeah. yeah. They're like right there with Impy, yeah, with yeah. all the Volkswagen stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, I think this is Impy glass and Impy yeah. seals, and that's an Impy glass. Nice. That one piece glass is... Even the crank up ones, I couldn't get it to work. Sure. So I had to uh, take a truck one, truck uh, regulator and make them into power windows. So are you fully sealed in this thing? Pretty much. Oh, that's nice. But yeah, Let me got, get that again. We got the power windows, which took me a little bit, but... I mean, that's they're, a they're, nice option to have. They're perfect now, yeah, they're really good. Doesn't quite go and, down all the way, but... Well, they're fast too, that's the yeah. thing, they're smooth and fast. Oh yeah, that's the... Uh, it's out of a Chevy truck, and I just, I was able to stuff it in there and get it to fit and... Sure. Took a little bit of... Figuring out, and then uh, put a little felt in there because yeah, the little window buffer. sliders. I was having a hell of a time with that, so came up with that. So the interior, you got like a low key, looks like kind of a trellis, door bar chassis. Yeah, I give us some some rigidity in the in the chassis, mm -hmm. you know, like we do in all of our cars with the doors. We have some more structure work down in the center of the car sure. too. That's another thing I see that gets overlooked sometimes with, with chassis and cars is they, they might build the B pillar and the A pillar and yeah. then they forget that there's a whole other part of the chassis that needs to be rigid. Yeah, you that's know, like the middle. You, you don't want the body to start freaking doing this on you. Yeah. You'll find out real quick. The doors won't fit anymore and nothing will fit in <laughs> Yeah. The other thing we did on this, which is kind of unique to a lot of the Baja builds, is when we capped the front, we made it stick out as a tab so that it's actually tabbed to the chassis right here. Okay. So if you were to shake the body, there is no movement on this body. I mean, yeah. it, it is solid. There's also another tab where the stock seat belts was mounted. We put a bracket there that bolts it to the roll cage as gotcha. well. So the back can't move, the front can't move. Really solid. So this is like Stefan's, right? It's got kind of a similar layout on the top. Yeah, we got the same kind of roll cage. And then you have like a suede upholstery behind it? Yep, I got aluminum roof here with the, with the upholstery on it. Mm -hmm. And then this is our dash out of our X6. So I made it, I made the car 12 inches wide so I could fit our interior in it. I wanted the same width as our cars that we make That's now. That's beautiful, yeah. So we use our same center console, our same dash. Um, all pretty much same dash layout. And then this is, I'm just, a lot of, I, you had a big hand in Stefan's car, and so I'm seeing a lot of similarities with some oh, of yeah, yeah. Some electronics like, and the yeah, packaging. Yeah. And yeah, his was built by someone else. We just kind of did a few did things a for him. a little but, overhaul. Yeah, yeah. And so we sealed all this. Yeah, so we're pretty much all sealed. We have a stereo system. We've got speakers here. We've got speakers up there, and we've got a big sub right here. And then, of course, we've got the uh, heating and air, which freaking what really do you What unit amazing. do you use? Vintage air. Okay. It's a Mark IV? Uh, just the big it's thing? They're smaller, they're, oh, okay. they're mini one they call it or something. Yeah. It works great though for this. And then this. what electronics are you using on this thing? So we have the uh, race pack dash which is okay. Yeah. And then I have switch pros which I really like. Yep. And we got the PCI race radios intercom system with the car to car. And then SSV works, you know they do a lot of UTV stuff but I use them a lot in the sand cars too. They sell us the head unit and their amps and all their system to and go that's with specific it. for the stereo? Yeah, it's specific because it ties yeah. into their amps and it controls everything from there. You can control your phone, all your yeah. Bluetooth music, anything you want. And then that's just the iPad mount there? Yeah, that's the iPad for if it wants to run an iPad. What's the track width on this thing, Andrew? Yeah, it's uh, pretty wide. <laughs> Is that the number? I mean, have you pushed this thing to top speed? No, not really. 